Hey there again, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. In today's sesh, we'll be doing my next installment of Guessing the Comic Grade. Hey there again, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. So, as part of me building out my library of uh, looking at different books at different grades, I wanted to do uh, the next book uh, that hopefully fares better than the one that we did last time that was set around a 2.5, 3.5 range. So we'll be taking a book from my personal collection, look at the different defects we find based off of the Overstreet price guide like we did last time, and guess the grade. So similar to last time, I'll do a video of, you, of showing the book so you guys could guess yourselves. And then the second part is me doing my own analysis on it. Something different I wanted to do today. I normally only slab books or send books to third-party grading companies that I plan to keep in my own collection. But I thought it'd be fun to go through a process today of taking a book that I had bought raw and see what it would cost to slab it, to clean and press it, um, and have it sent back, and see if the grade that I guess makes it so that it is profitable to actually slab this book or not. It might be better to, um, you know, flip and sell raw. For me, I normally keep my slab books, but I thought it'd be a fun exercise to do this. So today, we'll be going over my Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Today, I'll be looking at Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Same as last time, I have my cheat sheet here where I've taken um, some of the high-level items that I'll be looking for. For example, spine ticks, edge wear, um, foxing, um, colored chips, or any, any rust issues. On this right side here, you'll see items that I have actually taken from the Overstreet Guide to Grading Comics. Within this Overstreet Guide, in certain sections, you'll see uh, certain items here um, that they want us to look for. Bindery printing, cover inks, gloss, like what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, like for example, corners may be blunted or abraded. So first off, let's take a look at this book and calibrate where it fits in this. I'll be taking notes on here and let's do this. So here I, uh, I guess I see this is a rounded corner already. I'm counting the amount of spine ticks here. Some of these are color breaking. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. And then the very long one here. 
So then I'll say there's um, 10 color breaking ones, but throughout this process, I saw a lot of little ones, little tiny chips that kind of break past it. Top looks fairly good. Kind of a, a blunted corner there. This side looks good. It's a dog ear there. Looking at the back, you could see that um, the staple does not seem to have any sort of rust here. It looks fairly tight, but we'll check the inside. Same with here. You could tell that um, the wrap is not that great. Some of the front cover actually wraps over to the back. And you kind of see that um, you can't very see from there, but then there's a little bit of, of spine roll here, which can be fixed by a, um, a clean end press. So here you see um, some dirt, which can be cleaned by um, a cleaning by CGC or your third party uh, cleaning and pressing company. Inside, I did smell and there seems to be an, an acidic odor. What's important here is also that middle piece. So it looks like staples are very tight. It's not in the very middle. Also here, only one of them came through. I would consider this paper quality a little bit of um, off-white to cream. And you could really see that in, in this back piece here. You see like the tanning of colors. I also checked each of the pages. There's nothing cut out here, so I think we're going on that end. Next, what I'll do is I will take this list, compare it to the grading guide. And what's important here again, like I mentioned last time, is that different grades allow a certain amount of defects here. So for example, we saw about um, 10, um, 10 to 15 uh, spine ticks, um, some uh, braided corners and whatnot. So what I like to do is I always start to, I always like to start off in the middle. So I'll start off with a 5.0, trying to look at if it fits all of the criteria. It does fit the criteria, especially in the amount of defects allowed. So I wanted to check if, does this fit like a 6.0 or even a 7.0? So the 6.0, I kind of saw that acid odor is not allowed in the 6.0. So that led me to believe that it's definitely lower than a 6.0. So now I kind of went even lower than the 5.0, went to a four. So here I did find that um, minor odor is allowed and there is some uh, accumulation of creases allowed as well. Um, so when looking at this guide, I thought that maybe with the 10 to 15, um, that I would actually grade this a 4.5. So a 4.5, if I bring us back here, is a very good plus. So all the categories, it fits. And a very good plus in the front. You could see there, it allows about 10 to about 15 or 16 defects. So I would call this a 4.5. Tell me your grades in the comment section below. Thanks all. I came out to give this book a grade of 4.5. What we're gonna do next is take this book as a 4.5, see how much it costs based off of the different resources that I, that I use, and kind of log into CGC and see how much it would cost to slab this book and see if it makes, I guess, sense, both in SENSE and CENTS in terms of um, profitability. To help me figure out in this hypothetical situation of whether it's worth slabbing this book to sell it, I have a couple of resources which I'll use today. So I'll use the GoCollect website as well as the GPA analysis website. These two sites will help me figure out the fair market value or the FMV of this ASM number 33 rated at a 4.5. Outside of this, I'll be using the CGC website to figure out how much it costs to clean and press and slab this book. To make sure we keep things organized, I made this sheet where I wrote down the criteria I have for selling. This is hypothetical. Let's imagine that I just paid um, $50 for this book and I would need to make a profit of twice as much as that or $100 to make it worth 
slabbing, and selling. So let's jump into it. In GPA analysis, I already pulled up Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Here you'll see if I go down to a 4.5, the more recent sales in January of 2021 are $214 and uh, the low is $175. Here you'll be able to see the CGC uh, numbers for each of the slabs. It'll open up this website to confirm the certification. Back at the GP analysis, if you take the average of the 214 and the 175, that's about 194 and a half. So let's put that here, 194.5. Now going to go collect. I pulled up uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Here's the 4.5. The FMV is $170 with the most recent sale of $175. So let's put $170 into Go Collect. So the average FMV price right now is about $182 and a quarter. Imagine I paid $50 for the book raw. In terms of shipping, I'm going to assume that I used um, USPS uh, priority mail shipping, that's $15 over there. And I'm going to assume $15 back. So a total of 30. This may be more, but um, just for this exercise, let's call it 15 and 15. Going to CGC. I'm going to go to the submit site. I already have an account here. So I've done this a couple of times. So I'll just go through this. There are a couple of things that you can do through CGC. They have a lot of services in terms of pressing, cleaning, removing restoration, and so on and so forth. For us, we'll complete a submission form. Here we'll select their online form for comics and magazines. This will bring up um, this toolbar where I could select comics. They have options here, all mail to headquarters. And um, if you could see, uh, there's a lot of different options and services you could choose, but for this, I'll be doing grading and pressing the other options disappear and I'll click next. Here for the title, I have Amazing Spider-Man. Publisher is Marvel Comics. I have issue number 33. Issue date is February 1966. And for the declared value, let's just say I just put $150. I will click next. Now grading. Um, the tier of grading I'll choose here is value since the comic is valued at $200 or less. You'll be also able to select different custom labels as you see here. I will skip that and click next. And now we have the pressing tier. I will choose the value tier, which is also 200 or less, and I will not do fast track. I will just do the minimum. So I'll add this to the cart. We should see here our view cart, and it costs a total of 49.30. So let's put 49.30 here. All right, so the profits I would make from this minus the expenses it would take to slab the book are about $52. This does not fit my criteria. So for this scenario, I will probably not be slabbing this book. I will probably be selling it raw. And again, this is just a hypothetical situation. I will in actuality not be selling this book. I really like that book. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this demonstration. That was a fun exercise to go through to look at the grade that I estimate it to be versus how much it would cost this lab versus whether I could sell it for a profit. So if you guys have other resources or other tools that you use to do this sort of thing, please definitely comment in the comment section below, as well as let me know your grades. So if you do like this type of content, please give me that thumbs up, subscribe and click that bell icon so you're notified of when I come out with new content from my comic journey to yours keep making it your own. Thanks all. Bye.